Welcome back. As I mentioned in the previous section, the Bohr model of the atom was not the end of the story. Uh, for one thing, Bohr did not explain why the energy levels were quantized. He just showed that what the consequences of that quantization were. And also, his model did not work very well for larger atoms. So let's take a look at those two concepts separately. First, we'll look at a possible explanation for the quantization of the energy levels. And then we will look at a more up-to-date picture of the atom. We have just seen how Niels Bohr's formula for the hydrogen atom can be derived from the Rydberg formula. In the original work, Niels Bohr worked the other way around. He started with the assumption that the orbits of a hydrogen atom were quantized, only certain orbits were possible, and from there he was able to derive the Rydberg formula. But the question remains, why should the orbits of the hydrogen atom be quantized? Why can't an, an electron just orbit any distance away from the nucleus? Well, the answer to that came about 10 years after Bohr did his work, uh, when Louis de Broglie, who we've mentioned before in the context of matter waves, pointed out that his matter wave concept might explain why orbits of the hydrogen atom are, con are quantized. Here's the basic idea. I have drawn a sine wave shape on the paper towel here. And I want you to imagine that we're going to try to take this sine wave shape and fit it into circles. Okay, we could fit, I think I have like three peaks here, and we could fit all three of those peaks into a circle if we put them end to end right here. And so there we go. That would be, that would allow us to fit a sine wave onto a circle if we matched it at the very end of the sine wave. But we could also fit two sine waves on a circle. We could match it right here, where it's going up again. There, now I've fit two sine waves on a circle. Kind of goes around like that. And I could even go a bit farther. I can even fit just one sine wave on that same circle if I uh, bring this close to where this is going up. There, it's kind of have to try to fit it together. But there, we've kind of fit one sine wave on a circle. But you only can do that for certain radii of circles. You can't just fit an arbitrary radius with a sine wave of a certain length. Only when integer multiples of the wavelength match the circumference of your circle uh, can you fit the entire sine wave on your circle. It's the same principle as we learned last year when talking about standing waves on strings or standing waves in columns of air. Here, we have a circular standing wave that we're trying to fit um, on a circular pattern. Only certain standing waves are possible. With, in other words, only certain radii of circle will fit standing waves. So here's another view of that same idea. De Broglie's hypothesis was that matter particles like the electron um, had a wavelength. And if we take that wavelength and then use that to figure out what possible radii and orbit for an electron could have, uh, that will explain the quantization of the electron orbits. Here I show a picture from above, like I tried to show in that demonstration with the paper towels a moment ago. Uh, you can see here that this is a, a, a waveform you know, roughly sinusoidal. And you see that this waveform would not fit on that uh, circle of that particular radius there uh, because you don't have the ends coming together. The idea is that just like boundary conditions for a standing wave on a string, uh, you have to have a node at a certain place and an antinode another place. Well, we have boundary conditions here too, but the boundary condition here is that the wave must be continuous. 
here is one where the uh, wave is too long to uh, be, form a continuous uh, standing wave on that circle. And here we see one that is just right. So the condition that the complete wave must fit in the circular orbit gives us a way to determine what possible radii are allowed. The radii that are allowed are those that have their circumferences of the circles uh, corresponding to a multiple of the electron wavelength as determined by the de Broglie formula. Now the Bohr model of the atom, uh, coupled with de Broglie's suggestion for explaining why the energy levels were quantized was a, a quite a powerful model. Um, it was the first model to visualize the places that the electron is going to be in an atom in specific uh, energy levels. Uh, but we no longer look at the electrons in atoms as going around in circular orbits, like a planet would be orbiting the sun. Instead, uh, we have the same picture of the electron that we saw when electrons were moving freely and doing the interference effects. Uh, we describe the electron with a wave function, sometimes called a probability density function, uh, because what the wave function does is it describes the likelihood, if you were to measure it, of finding the electron at a specific position. Um, remember, the position and momentum of an electron, at least in the quantum mechanical view, cannot be precisely specified. We only have a certain probability of finding electron at any given location with any given specific uh, momentum. And as I said, this probability is described by this wave function or probability density function, as it is sometimes called. Um, in fact, it is the square of the amplitude of the wave function at a given point that is proportional to the probability of finding the electron. Now, the uh, wave function for an electron in an atom, or the probability density function, um, they are they can get quite complicated. Uh, the first one is a spherical shape more or less, and so that there is a, a sphere of, of space surrounding uh, the atom where you are very likely to find uh, the electron. Um, and then the second one is also spherical, but beyond that, uh, they assume different shapes. Um, these these uh, energy levels are no longer called orbits uh, because they're not circular paths for the electrons to follow. So they're sometimes called orbitals. A, a similar sort of term. Uh, and much of chemistry is devoted to describing how the, um, not only the atomic orbitals, but also the orbitals that get formed when bonding occurs, uh, that describe the, the nature of those orbitals and describe the nature of what the electrons do um, in a um, molecule.